Hey guys, it's Penelope in London and I read astrology. I do evolutionary astrology. I also help people understand wounding and imprints from childhood, particularly complex PTSD. I've read so much on it and um, through my own wisdom and getting through so much in my own life, I, through the chart, am able to really be of assistance to people that need to evolve um, any childhood imprints and sort of get to a point in life where we're integrated and we're not suffering all the time, you know, like the day in, day out, we begin to sort of grow into what we're here to do. Um, with the chart work, what I like to do is sometimes I like to look at the daily chart, but with personal astrology charts, I think Chiron is the big one that I like to look at to understand or help people to understand because it's the wound that we are supposed to integrate. And we have something called the Chiron return every 49 years. So we only have it once. Chiron return, 49, 51 years old, you get your Chiron return. And that's when most of my healing really began to kick off and um, really you know, led to a sort of a bit of a breakdown and then had me come out the other end. So you can't force a flower to bloom, but basically Chiron forces it, it pushes it. And then you do get to bloom if you know what's going on and you understand it. So see this chart here. This is today. You can go to Astro Seek to get your own chart. You can see Astro Seek here. And what we have currently is that the moon actually is just about to hit Pluto. That's interesting. Um, the depths of the depths. So the moon, Pluto, 14 degrees of Capricorn. And we've got Pluto at 22 degrees. Jupiter is at 23. Saturn is at 27. We've got Neptune, and that's all in Capricorn. Then I will say the Jupiter and Saturn on the 21st of December, they're going to be at zero degrees of Aquarius. So we're going in for big changes. And also Pluto will move into Aquarius 2023, it will go in, and then it will go retrograde, and then it will go back in in 2024. So we've got some big shifts going on there as well. And then Pluto will spend 20, until 2044 in the sign of Aquarius. So it's quite interesting what's going on now. We're having the breakdown of patriarchal rule, as we can see throughout the world what's going on. We've got Neptune in Pisces at 18 degrees. Chiron is in Aries, so we're healing ourselves at this time. You know, it's like you're on an aircraft and it's maybe having a problem and the air, you know, the airflow comes down and the air masks and you would have to put your own on before you can help other people. So Chiron in Aries is very much that. It's like right now, as this moves through, and over the years, we're healing ourselves. Mars went retrograde a few days ago, and um, was retrograde for 10 weeks, sorry. And now it's gone direct um, about a few, maybe about five days ago, it went direct. And it's going to be heading on to hit um, Uranus. It's going to hit when it hits um, Uranus. We're going to have a big square to all of the planets up here. And that's happening, you know, as it goes through it. This will be when they're conjunct, it's going to hit all of these, the Jupiter, Saturn and Pluto. And it's going to be a square. So we're in for a bit of a ride with the planets. And we can see that um, currently in society. What I want to do as well is tell you that the sun is in Scorpio. It's got four more days there and then it's going to go into Sagittarius. We've got Mercury also in Scorpio. That's going through my 12th house. And today, actually, the sun is on my ascendant because I'm 27 degrees Scorpio. And you find out your rising sign um, by your time of birth. So you do need your time of birth to understand your rising sign, which would start here. And then you can understand where all of the planets, what houses the planets fall into. Venus is in Libra. So I wanted to look at that and give you a few ideas about what that means because it's doing a few things it's squaring all of the planets up here and it's also um we've got also an opposition to uh, we've also got this opposition going on to uranus so this is our thinking and uranus is breaking free of limitations so we're probably trying to figure out how we want to break free of all of the limitations we've been put under currently so let's look at Venus square Saturn. Um, if you can see here, 
I'll just put my glasses on so I can read this to you. So Venus square Saturn is where there can be negative feelings arising from our relationships with other people. It may seem to us that people are reserved and cold towards us. Therefore, we may feel unloved or unrecognized. And we can also feel disappointment, you know, with love in the world right now. And um, there can be an example of love not being returned or, you know, break the feelings of situations where we're breaking up. Um, but we're looking at the collective chart here. So, you know, you, we can read this a bit differently. And um, also it's where we can feel shy, timid, shy, sensitive to rejection. And also, you know, we want to keep away, we we'll just want to keep away from other people. So if you're feeling that energy at the moment of wanting to keep away from other people, then you could you you would understand why. The other thing is is that this is a time where we can have self reflection and relaxation and not to worry too much about the relationships around us. With the Venus um, astrology meaning, and um, I will tell you that Venus symbolizes in evolutionary astrology. It symbolizes um, our needs and the way we hear ourselves, the way we hear our inner speech to ourselves. And the way we talk to ourselves is really important because if we're, we've got an inner critic and we're putting ourselves down, we can really, you know, hamper our own ability to step forward into life. So we have to maybe look at our inner critic. That's some of the work I like to do as well with people. And it's also to do with our values and our values, you know, things that we value and um, our principles. And also it can represent um, where we, you know, have a weakness as well. Pluto, on the other hand, is birth, life, life, death, and it's rebirth and transformation, transmutation. And it's also the ending of things. It's judgment day. And it can give rise to obsessions and convictions. It's the, you know, it can be the dark night of the soul as well. And it can be where we're succumbing to an urge, like, you know, it can be addictions and the merging of soul. And also it's where we want to get to the core of things and destroy negative things and bring on healing and transformation. So if you look at this right now, that's healing and transformation. Jupiter is the bigger picture. It's law. It's also spirituality and it's travel overseas. And Saturn is to do with um, restriction. So we can really see how that's playing out. And then with that in Venus, um, in Libra, um, I would say Venus square Pluto, I can tell you this now, is this transit is where we feel all of our emotions more intensely. Our emotions may be harder now to ignore than, you know, whether they be positive or negative. And, you know, we, it's about where we need, may not be able to control our reactions and they may be too intense or we might be too aggressive and also where we can be easily manipulated or seduced by other people, or we might do that to other people too. And it's where we think about more, more about relationships and you know, what's good for us and you know, what kind of behavior we will and will not tolerate. And this transformation aspect will also can apply to our character. And it's a transit that can achieve positive change and it can be positive changes in ourselves and others. And then we're going to do the Venus Jupiter here. It's useful knowledge. Um, it's where we can have Jupiter, Venus is a lack of self-discipline, especially, you know, when we can sort of be grandiose or we can, you know, do too much shopping or too much, you know, drinking and stuff like that. And it's where we need to be cautious and control our desires and our, and it's to do with pleasant experiences as well. And also it can be where we get along with people very well because, you know, it's happiness and optimism, but it's got to, planets that have higher octave and the lower octave. And it's where we can be arrogant as well. Um, and also we need to try and be modest whilst this is playing out because it pays off in the long run. Then what I want to show you is a book that I suggest that you might like to get. If you see this book here, this is called Planets in Transit by Robert Hand. You can get it on, you can get this book on Amazon. And I re highly recommend it because it's got the, all of the planets here, the squares, and it's all marked. You can see if you look really closely, you can see that it's got not my little bits of paper here, but it's got marks in it. So you can easily guide yourself through all the way from the sun, all the way to Pluto. So that's it for today. And I'll be back.
back um, tomorrow or the day after. Okay, catch you later. If you want to book a session with me, please do. And my booking link is below. And subscribe if you haven't. That would be good too. I'm building my channel. Thanks a lot.